Well, good yeah. evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Urbana City Council for Monday, January 9th, 2023. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Ms. Hersey? Ms. Colasetti? Here. Ms. Bishop? Here. Ms. Wilkin? Here. Mr. Quisenberry? Here. Mayor Marlin? Here. Next item is approval of minutes from several previous meetings. It would be the November 28th, 22 minutes, the December 5th, 2022 public hearing minutes, and the December 12th meeting minutes. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. Um, Mary Alice uh, made the motion, and I heard James Quisenberry first. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Are there any additions to the agenda? James. Just a quick question. Um, will we de be doing public input before the two items under D or, or after? I think we will do the uh, presentations first tonight. We have people traveling from out of town. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, I think maybe the appropriate place is at Committee of the Whole presentation, but just want to um, give a heads up that I would like to remove one of those items just to save James from reading the whole consent agenda and then reading it again. Thank you. Which one? Item A. You want to remove it from the consent agenda? Yes, on to regular. Item A. Any other additions or changes? Okay. We'll move on to presentations. Tonight we have two presentations. The first is our annual audit presentation. Human, uh, human Resources and Finance will be conducting that. And you should have a uh, handout at your... There we go. <laughs> All right. You're gonna need to move closer. You can, you can move that microphone Split closer. To you. Okay, yeah. I'll start over. So our audit firm, can you hear me? Our audit firm, Lauderback and Amon, and city staff recently conducted our FY22 annual financial audit for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2022. So this process takes place over many months. Um, we be begin with planning meetings in May, and we work on our audit through the end of December. Jamie Wilker, partner with Lauderback and Amon, is here to present the financial reports and the results of the audit, but before she begins, I wanted to mention a few items. The financial reports being presented tonight are on a different basis of accounting than the quarterly financials and budget reports you receive throughout the year. Um, general, generally accepted accounting principles and governmental accounting standards govern the presentation of our financial statements and the annual reports being presented tonight. These audit reports are prepared, prepared on the modified and full accrual basis of accounting, while the reports you receive throughout the year are primarily on the cash basis of accounting. The main difference between these accounting methods is the timing of when revenues, expenditures, and liabilities are recognized. Also, there are some differences in the way funds are presented. For example, the general fund and the governmental fund section of the report includes other small funds. For your reference, all reports being presented tonight are available on the city's website under the Finance Department section um, under Financial Reports. Links to these reports are also in the FY22 Annual Audit Presentation Memo being presented tonight um, and included in the Council Packet. Council members have been provided copies of the specific pages that Jamie will go over tonight for easy reference. 
However, these pages are also in the city's annual comprehensive financial report link provided in the council memo, uh, memo that is on the city's website. Sorry, I would like to thank the city's finance team and the auditing staff of Lauterbach and Amon for all of their hard work on the audit. I'd also like to thank community development for their help with grant reporting for this audit. This was Lauterbach and Amon's first year auditing the city and the first year always takes more time, preparation and planning. Um, so now I would like to introduce Jamie Wilkie, partner with Lauterbach and Amon, who will present the FY 2022 audit reports. Thank you, Shannon. Good evening. We thank you for having us this evening. Um, we have quite a large document to try to break down this evening in just a few minutes. So if you have those pages that Shannon referenced in front of you, that would certainly be helpful. Uh, I'd also like to start this evening's meeting with a thank you to the finance team. Uh, as Shannon indicated, a first year audit always requires a bit more effort, um, kind of building files, getting to know each other. Uh, certainly that doesn't happen without a coordinated effort uh, from the staff. Uh, they were a pleasure to work with, uh, really provided everything we needed in a timely basis and gave us full access to all information. Uh, so I certainly want to thank the team. Um, I know not everybody is here this evening, uh, but certainly it was a successful first year audit. So thank you all very much. Uh, we do have just a few slides this evening to cover some of the key areas within the audit document. Uh, as I indicated, we have issued what we call an unmodified or clean opinion. That is the highest level opinion that the city could have obtained for the June 30th, 2022 annual audit. I also wanna point out that the city received what we call the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. That is for the prior year audited financial statements, but included in the introductory section of this year's audit. That is a program that is administered by the GFOA or Government Finance Officers Association uh, and really deemed the highest level financial reporting that any local government can undertake each year. So uh, certainly wanna give kudos to the city and the staff for earning that prestigious award as well. I do wanna also indicate that as part of our testing, we're required to communicate any internal control related findings. Uh, those are typically what we would deem significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. And we're happy to report this evening we had no such findings, so truly a clean audit process. Uh, as Shannon indicated, you have a couple of key excerpts out of the large document. Uh, there's over 200 pages to digest, so this evening we've tried to condense some of those key sections. Uh, the financial statement audit itself really has two primary goals. Number one, we want to ensure that those financial statements that we are presenting are in fact materially correct. And number two, we are required to look at overall internal controls for the city. Uh, we do detailed testing of transactions. We're looking at policies and procedures. We're walking through transactions from start to finish. Uh, so certainly if there were any areas of concern or red flags, those have to be formally reported to council. And we're happy to report we had no such findings. We've listed a few key sections here. I won't go through each in detail. As you have some time, I would encourage you to spend a few more minutes on some of these. Starting on page three, you'll see a copy of the first page of the transmittal letter. That should be the first item included in your packet of condensed information. Really just provides a background on the, the city itself. Uh, page eight provides a copy of that Certificate of Achievement Award. We did not include that in the packet this evening, but if you're looking for that within the document, that's where you would find it. Important section, page 11, our independent auditor's report. This is where I indicated that the city received an unmodified or clean audit opinion. Probably one of the most important sections of the document is what we call management's discussion and analysis. You'll see the first page of that section provided within the excerpts this evening, beginning on page 15 and going through page 25. Uh, this section really does serve as the executive summary to the document. There's a lot to digest. Uh, you'll see some high level discussion of results as well as trends and comparisons to the prior year. 
Page 28 begins our basic financial statements. We've included this evening a few key statements within that excerpt that you have this evening. Um, overall, I can tell you results were positive for the year. So as we look at overall city equity, it was in fact up in comparison to last fiscal year. And finally, the statistical section begins on page 156. I always point this out to our councils and board as there's really a wealth of historical information for the city provided as the last section of your annual audited financial statements. Also included this evening, just a few key excerpts of the city's pension plans. Uh, as Shannon indicated, we sometimes have slight differences between what's required for accounting disclosures um, versus what is reported internally. Uh, so we have provided what the accounting-based percent funded ratios are for each of the city's pension plans this evening. You'll see that they are all three heading and trending in the right direction. 112% funded for IMRF, about 62% for police, and roughly 84% for fire. Um, my one note here is current Illinois state statute requires those funds to be 90% funded by the year 2040. Certainly we know there's a lot to digest, so I provided my contact information. Um, happy to entertain any questions anytime. You really have full access to your auditing firm whenever you have questions, so please feel free to reach out. I'm certainly happy to open it up for any specific questions this evening. Otherwise, just want to thank um, City Council and staff again for a successful audit. Any questions? Mary Ellis, thank you very much. Uh, a thank you to you and, and the staff. Um, it's always good to hear that we are taking care of the taxpayer's money uh, honestly and transparently. Um, I, I guess my question is more to the city staff in terms of the, the increase in the city's net position. I'm wondering if that is due to ARPA funds or if that is something else or a combination. Um, yes, yeah, so investments and cash are higher because of the 13 million we've received in ARPA funds. Yes. All right, thank you very much. Grace. Um, echo the, the thank you and well done on having these um, excellent standards in our financial reporting and thank you for keeping the audit on us. Um, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit briefly in layman's terms, I don't know if it's the city or the company here, um, but I believe there was a connection right with this audit and reevaluating the pension status and what we changed kind of what we were budgeting to pay into pensions for this coming year. I wonder if that's correct, and if you could give us kind of briefly layman terms a little bit about that. Sure. Do you want me to tackle, you tackle, <laughs> me <laughs> tackle? So, yes, I think I indicated that we kind of have two sets of pension numbers out there. Uh, one set is what's used for what we would call funding purposes, and so that really ties to making sure you have sound assumptions, you're, you're making progress on funding, you're taking a look at you know, that projected cash flow that's gonna happen into the future, and that's really how your actuary determines those required contributions each year. Um, I always say that you could have 10 actuaries in the room and you'd get 10 different numbers because unfortunately there's a whole bunch of assumptions that go into those calculations, and there's some ranges of what the actuary can apply within certain assumption categories. So um, I believe, bless you, what you all have been working on is really kind of on the funding side of looking at um, percent funded, what that means going forward. Actuaries do typically smooth investment returns, meaning the immediate impact of some of the market volatility that we're seeing doesn't immediately impact your funded percentage or your contributions from an actuary's funding standpoint. Unfortunately, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, or GASB, which is who we have to adhere to for audit reporting purposes, kind of has a different set of assumptions that they use in calculating these percentages, and they do not smooth investment gains or losses, meaning they require the actuary to calculate the liability as of your fiscal year end, and apply that against the assets that are on hand as of fiscal year end on a true market basis. So that's why you'll see some distinction or difference between some of the percent funded numbers. They're both correct, I know that sounds a little strange, but one is funding, one is accounting disclosure. 
So hopefully that answers. Yeah, thank you. And I think then just kind of simplest, if, is there a major change? Because it seems like when we're doing the budget, there was a change in the pension amount, or no, was it the, the levy? What we just passed, we talked about a change in the pensions because of, was it auditing or actuarial? Um, I, I, don't know if I, I think Elizabeth place. can answer the question, and she's got a microphone back at the oh, table. Oh, look at that. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to try this fancy new microphone here. <laughs> so, so what we discussed at the time we looked at the tax levy is that the city's policy is to reach 100% funding on the both police and fire pensions within 20 years, and we started down that path in 2018 with the help of our actuary for the pension funds, Todd Schroeder. And so our that, that, that is our plan that we talked about at the time we discussed the tax levy. What we also talked about then was that um, there was a kind of a five-year transition that was the first five years of those 20 years, and we'd essentially completed the transition a year early. And so now we're, we're clearly on that path to, to reach, to achieve that goal for pension funding. Does that answer the question? I think it might, but I think I'll just have to rewatch and learn more about pensions. Okay, or I'm happy to talk to you about it anytime, so. Thank you. Mary Alice. So I just want to understand your explanation there. Would it be equivalent to saying that if I logged on to a stock account today, um, this is what my stock portfolio is, and then the next day, because stocks change in prices, it might change? Exactly. So in this case, it would be, as of this date, this is how much money is Correct. in Correct. Okay, Correct. I just want to make sure I understood. Thank you. Correct. Yes, and we obviously all know the volatility right now in the market. Further questions? I guess none are coming. I just wanted to say thank you once again. Thanks to the finance team, Elizabeth, Shannon, all the people who work day in and day out to pull these numbers together and to keep us going in the direction we need to go. And thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Or Jamie, sorry. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, our next presentation is on the Housing and Homeless Initiative grant update, otherwise known as HHI. And that's Sheila Dodd and Braden Belcher. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Great. Uh, so tonight, I will be providing a brief update on our Housing and Homeless Initiatives Consolidated Grant Program. Um, this program was, uh, has been a collaboration between the cities of Urbana and city of Champaign. Both cities, through this process, brought together over $5 million in funding to address homelessness and housing gaps in our community. The total funding that was made available through this process was over $5.3 million. And as I said, that came from several different pots that the city of Urbana and city of Champaign had. And you can see that breakdown here. Um, just over $2.6 million came from the Urbana Home ARP pot of money. $285,000 came from uh, the Home Investment Partnership Program. Uh, the city of Champaign contributed $175,000 in their community development block grant funding, and then the Champaign also contributed $2.2 million in city general fund to this program. So uh, as, I, as I mentioned, this program specifically targeted uh, ho uh, homelessness needs in our community as well as housing gaps and affordable housing. Um, programs that, or projects were eligible if they fit into one of these six categories that you see above you here. So again, so supportive services, uh, housing navigation, programming, um, tenant-based rental assistance, um, affordable housing projects, um, the development or acquisition of non-congregate shelter and, or, or housing gaps, which housing gaps is kind of an umbrella term that just refers to um, programs or projects that we currently don't see in our community, but that could address um, issues of, of homelessness or housing affordability in our community. 
So um, this was the timeline that we pursued. Um, we did present this to council back in, I believe, early October when we presented the intergovernmental agreement with the city of Champaign. So we launched the application on Friday, November 4th. Um, and then city staff from Urbana and Champaign uh, held two informational sessions for uh, interested applicants. Um, one uh, at uh, Champaign City Council cha Chambers on November 4th, and then the second one was held at the Urbana Free Library on Monday, November 28th. And the purpose was just to provide a forum for interested applicants to ask questions, get assistance if they were unsure about the process, and to just provide more information um, to, to any agency that was interested in applying. The application process closed on December 12th. And then uh, staff from Urbana and Champaign met jointly to evaluate um, and score applications the week of December uh, 13th through um, the 16th. So throughout that scoring process, um, city staff worked with um, city of Champaign staff. We um, jointly developed a scoring tool that we utilized in the process. Um, and that, that tool was provided to applicants during the application process just so we could have a transparent process and so that they could know um, how their applications would be scored and what criteria would be used. Um, the, uh, the discussion centered on uh, determining um, which programs were the most appropriate for the funding sources um, and what, um, what allocation amounts were appropriate. And just to clarify, um, once the two kind of pots of uh, applicants were determined, you know, Champagne or Urbana pots, um, at that point the process will, will separate. Um, Urbana will execute agreements with our grantees and then the, uh, the grantees that Champagne um, wanted to fund, they will execute agreements with, with those applicants. So as it stands right now, these are the uh, programs that the city of Urbana will be funding. Um, the total at this time is um, $940,000. Um, I'll break down the acronyms just in case something's not clear. So Champaign County Regional Planning Commission um, will be receiving $148,000 um, to support their housing navigation program. Champaign County Healthcare Consumers will be receiving $296 for their special populations case management, working with um, individuals who are experiencing homelessness who uh, have um, uh, medical health needs. Um, Cunningham Township Supervisor's Office will be receiving $375,000 uh, to support their Bridge to Home program. And then See You at Home will be receiving $120,000 um, for um, housing navigation services that will specifically target individuals who are uh, in their shelter system. So the next steps in this process, um, next week, staff will be bringing the actual funding agreements to you. So you will be seeing a version of this presentation again next week. Uh, you can't get rid of me that easily. Um, and at that point, we'll be providing a, a, a breakdown with greater detail about each program that we're recommending to be, to be funded. So you'll see that in your packet for next week. And then you will vote to, uh, to a, um, you'll be voting on those. Beginning in April, city staff will be preparing quarter, quarterly reports on all of the programs that we are funding. Um, and part of that process is really to ensure that um, agencies are collaborating with each other. We wanna make sure that we're not um, you know, fighting against each other, but that programs are complementing each other in the community. And that's part of, gonna be part of that reporting process so that we can really determine that the funding is um, being used to, um, to fill gaps and that pro programs are, are working together collaboratively. Um, as you might've noticed just from the numbers, there will be a balance. So there, we weren't able to allocate all of the funding we have, um, which means that there is a balance and that balance will remain available for, for future projects or programs. Um, I will say that there is one grantee um, that uh, Homestead, the single room occupancy um, entity on Griggs Street, we have um, determined to fund them. At this point, the, the project that they requested is um, in flux a little bit and we're working with them to determine um, specifically what we'll be funding. We do want to support them since they do really great work in the community. It's just the amount that they originally requested might change, so we're going to hold off on that on that one for now. 
Um, there, is, there were other um, agencies that submitted housing development applications, which we were very supportive of. Um, however, we wanted to ensure they had an actual location for their development before we committed funds. So we are holding off for now on those until they have site control, just so we can make sure that you know, we're committing funding to a project that's you know, at least has a location. Um, and then there was only uh, one application that didn't meet the guidelines, so that was a, um, a, a hard pass, um, and another um, proposed project that we just felt kind of duplicated services in the community. So both Urbana and Champaign agreed to, to not fund that program. But we, we um, were very grateful for all of the applications we received, and we think that these are really great programs that will um, hopefully make a positive impact in our community. Um, and then again, like I said, next week we'll be presenting the actual agreement, the actual funding agreements, um, and we'll have a, a more detail about the programs and um, you'll have the opportunity to ask more questions before actually voting on them. Um, so for tonight, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions for Braden. Chandra. Hi, Braden. Thank you so much for you and Sheila's work on this. Um, so to clarify, the total pot of money, if you could go back to that slide, so the total pot of money is this whole thing, or is it just like Urbana Home and Ur the two Urbana Home pots that we're funding the four um, programs that you listed, or is it out of this whole thing, including Champagne? Okay. Turn this off. Um, it will require just continued collaboration and partnering with Champagne just to kind of determine what you know what they want to do, what we want to do. We certainly will have the the home ARP and the 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 home funds available. We also do have CDBG funds that we're trying to figure out ways that we can maybe pair some of that money to it. Um, so that's all that money is not going anywhere. Um, we'll you know, we'll be continuing to, to work um, to make sure we can pair it with good projects. Okay, because I, I just want, well, I'm trying to clarify because you said um, Champagne approved some, we approved some, so I didn't know if it was just the full pot of money are funding both or is it even though the money's together, it's still kind of separate for the two cities? Yeah, so um, Urbana, so the Urbana agreements are coming out of the, the home ARP and then the Urbana home money, so that, that's the funding that we um, uh, oversee directly um, the Champagne General Funds and the Champagne CDBG. You know, we we have the desire on both sides to continue that collaboration. What that looks like with their funds could, you know, potentially change. But we are committed to continuing to um, to meet these needs in the community as a, as um, as possible. Thank you, Mary Alice. Thanks for the update. Um, so if I remember correctly, if you go back to the slide in terms of the categories that were going to be funded, so you say non-congregate shelter, so the, the shelter that Champaign is running right now would not fall under these this pot of money, is that correct? So the it, it would under the, the Champaign general funds if Champaign wanted to execute an agreement for, for that shelter they could. Um, the, the home ARP, that, that requirement is specifically tied to the home ARP funds, which um, does specify that it has to be for non-congregate shelter. So for example, the Griggs Street SRO would qualify, um, but Strides is considered a congregate shelter. So if Champaign wanted to use their general funds, they certainly can. Um, but the, the home ARP, the Urbana home ARP money would, uh, would not be eligible for that specific category. Okay, and then you gave a total of approximately a million dollars that is going to be allocated. Is that a whole pot of 5.3 million, or is that just the money that Urbana is allocating? That's the, that's the money that Urbana is allocating. Champagne has their, their list of the programs that they have. So there they are additional will be taken programs to their council. other than what you just said Cor that are going to be funded. Correct. Okay. Um, and then my last question has to do with rental assistance. That is one of the, the options here, and you had mentioned that Township would be getting bridge to home dollars. Do you know roughly how much will be allocated to rental assistance? I can provide that more detail on that next week. Um, okay. th their program is um, building capacity with additional case management staff, housing and legal s navigation services, and then direct assistance to clients. So um, 
we can get more detail for next week's presentation on this. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. That's fine. There's just been a lot of conversation about rental-based assistance and the, and the high demand in the community. Yes. So One thing I'll say is that we, so we had the money set aside for tenant-based rental assistance, um, and then the City of Champaign set aside some of their CDBG funding for um, TBRA management um, administration. We didn't receive any applications in this round uh, for TBRA, but again, that money's not going anywhere, so we hope that we can um, continue to work with local agencies that might be interested in, in operating a TBRA program. Um, and so again, that, that will be um, an ongoing discussion. Do you know approximately what of the 5.3 million um, is being proposed to be spent between both entities? Because we have 1 million, what is Champagne thinking about? So I believe it's about 1.4, but again, they have to take it to their council as well, so that could, could change. So about half of the money? Correct. It okay. did come out mostly half, and again, that, that 940 number, um, as we again continue to work with uh, some of the grantees that we're not funding right now, that will potentially go up as we kind of solidify um, program agreements with them. All right, thank you so much. Chandra, and then Grace. Oh, let go. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, thanks again for the presentation. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around, I think, similar trains of thought that Chandra and Mary Alice were asking. Um, it seems like of this pot of 5.3 million, I think one of the questions is still, is it planned to split it 50-50? I think the question is, you know, would it be possible that we just have 1 million for Urbana programs and 4 million for Champaign programs, or is there a plan to split those funds 50-50 between the cities? So I'll go to the wheel again, just to clarify. So um, home money, and this has come up in discussion before, because we're in a consortium with Champaign, that funding needs to be available for programs countywide. Um, so we're, you, we can't say, oh, this home, fun this home funding we're only gonna use in Urbana. Um, throughout the discussion that we had in the review process with Champaign staff, I mean, we, we did consider that, but at the same time, I, I think we all view these housing issues as really crossing Wright Street, I mean, you know, um, a shelter in Champaign will benefit Urbana and, and vice versa. So um, it wasn't so much, and, and Champaign will be funding some programs in Urbana as well through, through this process. So I think we kind of viewed it more as that collaborative effort. Um, and again, with, with the home money specifically, we, we just can't really draw that hard line of, oh, this will, we can, we're only gonna fund Urbana. Um, but we certainly wanted to make sure that we had a good um, spread of, of programs, not just geographically, but also in terms of making sure we're filling those gaps. So funding programs that are meeting needs that maybe aren't being fully met currently. Great, thank you. Yes, that definitely makes sense. Um, and then as far as the amount, it seems like we're spending, you know, obviously not all, you said about half of this pool. So is there plans to do a future round of applications? or rolling in continuously? So once this process is kind of closed out, you know, we want to get agreements executed with the agencies that we currently have, you know, squared away. Um, we have a couple applicants that we are continuing to work with. Um, again, there's some development projects that are, we think, very unique and we would like to fund, but again, we want to see them get that site control. We want to know they have an address. So there's more work that's going to be done, and then in the future we'll be bringing those before you again, obviously. Um, and then in terms of that TBRA, you know, we get that TBRA allocation every year, so that money's not going anywhere, and we definitely wanna make sure that, um, you know, as we hear that rental assistance is a big need in the community, making sure we're doing that outreach and building those relationships with agencies that provide TBRA so that we can use that funding for those programs. And saying the money will be there, so it sounds like there's not a time limit or deadline when we have to spend these funds. Home ARP, I believe, is 2030, um, so you know we have some time. And then again, that TBRA um, we get every year. Um, home, like CDBG, there are some timeliness um, requirements. Those are currently lifted because of COVID restrictions. But that I don't want to get too much in the weeds. To answer your question, there are some time constraints, but we're not. It's not a issue of pressure right now. So we do have some time to kind of figure it out. Great, thank you. And I'll look forward to seeing more of the agreements next week. And I think it would be helpful if we could have an idea of some of the projects um, that are also getting funded with the agreements with Champaign, just to kind of see a holistic picture of this pot and these projects that are, as you said, beyond just uh, a town border. Absolutely. Thank you. Chandra. That's exactly what I was gonna ask. A list of programs Champaign is funding, it would be helpful. 
Um, then uh, additionally, the housing developments you're still trying to work with, are you at liberty to say what those are? Like, are they the ones that also apply for ARPA? Um, so the one that I was referring to specifically, um, Champaign County Healthcare Consumers, is pursuing a project uh, for a tiny home village that's specifically targeted um, to individuals that are, are hard to house because they're, they, they have a lot of comorbidities, they have health issues and health concerns, and so they really need specialized care. Um, we're very, very supportive of that project. We wanna make sure that um, you know they, there's a site, there's site control, and there's a location. Um, so that's, that's one that we're um, really working on at this point. Okay, that's, that's really helpful and good to hear. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you very much, Braden and Sheila. All right, we'll move on to public input. If you wish to address the Urbana City Council, please come to the microphone and state your name for the record. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, City Council, my name is Sarah Nixon, and I urge you to reject the 2023-2026 Fraternal Order of Police Union contract when it comes up for your vote, which I understand will happen on January 17th. Is, is that correct? That information? Nod? No. Your head? Nobody knows? That's the earliest possible, but no decision has been made at this okay. point. So, Consistent with the secret society nature of the FOP, the contract has been negotiated away from the public's view, entirely without transparency, and it has been pushed before you in haste, with zero meaningful opportunity for due city council and public oversight and input. In short, the FOP contract process is a farce and once again a mockery of our democratic values of accountability and transparency. These are our public safety officers sworn to protect us and I do believe that most do that with integrity. However, in too many cases, bad officers are protecting their kind while failing victims and while negotiating in the back room ever higher compensations for themselves and ever stronger protections from accountability. The people of Urbana have been asking and asking and asking for exactly the opposite, yet apparently utterly absent from the proposed contract are requirements for officer conduct oversight and disciplinary policies, let alone robust ones. In addition to being a resident of, ouch, of Urbana, I am a survivor of egregious and severe Urbana police failure, including failure to protect, failure to investigate, fabrication of evidence, gravest false statements, and appalling gender bias, which cumulatively has resulted in profound devastation and trauma to my daughter and to myself. Most of the officers involved in our travesty of policing are still on the force and to this day have never faced exposure nor consequences for their misconduct. Specifically responsible for destroying with impunity innocent, vulnerable lives are Cortez Gardner and Timothy McNaught. Far from public accountability, the standard practice at UPD and within law enforcement more widely is to confer accolades and promotions on officers who victimize or re-victimize marginalized members of the community. Formal and informal oversight policies and practices at the Urbana Police Department are set up to ensure that traumatized victims of police wrongdoing will face insurmountable barriers to the fundamentally non-functional complaints process and will never be heard and will never access resolution. Moreover, the evidence shows that officer discipline does not in fact even exist in Urbana and the toxic and dysfunctional culture that allowed the negligence, dereliction, and misconduct in our case continues to flourish to this day and there is ample evidence indicating that this dangerous and depraved culture largely originates with the Fraternal Order of Police. 
As a survivor with direct and devastating experience of Urbana police misconduct, I am available to provide further information about my experiences to any of you. In the meantime, I urge all council members to vote against the FOP union contract, which perpetuates a corrupt system of protecting its own rather than vulnerable members of society. When you stepped forward to serve on this council, every one of you promised the public greater police accountability and reduced police spending. So please honor those commitments to us by voting no on the impending, entirely inadequate contract proposal. Does anyone else wish to address the Urbana City Council? Okay, we'll move on to uh, council input and communications. All right, unfinished business. Oh, sorry. And I, I just wanted to ask if you could restate when the um, open house is for the firehouses, the, if you would plan to add that in. That was going to be Thursday. reports of officers, but I'll let Carol go ahead. This Thursday, January 12th, an open house style um, interaction with the public from 5.30 to 7.30 in council chambers. Um, just to make it easy for folks to give their feedback, there'll be a form that you can just check boxes so you, you can write something out, you don't have to. And then the, um, the boards uh, that will be shown at uh, the open house will be available online for two weeks afterwards and people can give their feedback um, online if they prefer. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, reports of standing committees, there are none. We'll move on to the report from the Committee of the Hall. James Quisenberry. All right, thank you. Um, for our consent agenda, um, the uh, Committee of the Hall recommends approval of ordinance number 2022-12-0 5-4, an ordinance amending Urbana City Code Chapter 3, Section 3-43, increasing the number of Class R and T-1 liquor licenses for the Best of Africa Food Store, LLC, 208 West Griggs Street in Urbana. Is there a second? I'll second. Chandra? Okay. Moved by James, seconded by Chandra. Further discussion? Consent. Oh, sorry. Of course, okay, I'm it. Will the clerk please call the roll? Miss Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Miss Hersey? Yes. Miss Colasetti? Yes. Miss Bishop? Yes. Miss Wilkin? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. That motion passes. So, for our regular agenda, um, the Committee of the Whole uh, recommends approval of ordinance number 2022 12. 053, an ordinance amending the Urbana zoning map uh, for 1603 East Washington Street, plan case number 2464-M-22. Is there a second? Second. Moved by James, seconded by Mary Alice. Is there a discussion? Grace. Thank you. Um, I request to move this on the regular agenda because I do have some things to share with council members and the public. Um, I think I've made it known and you're aware of my concerns about um, doing this a little too prematurely and not having the public input before I um, have concerns that we're committing ourselves to these developments. Um, I hear that there will be further process and I think that's great. Um, I had to talk to some staff about having that in the language of this um, ordinance and I understand that it's not the appropriate place for the rezoning ordinance um, but I would hope that at some point um, it sounds like there may be other opportunities to add that language of having a kind of cleared out or written down process that council will have approval after public input and we can fully consider that public input before having a final commitment to a development on this site um, so I hope that we 
can have that in writing later, or even if we don't, that we still have that process and practice. Um, and for me, I don't feel comfortable without having those assurances in writing and think it's still a little premature to change the zoning and have concerns that we're committing ourselves without fully having that public input. So I will be voting no for this um, at this point, and I look forward to having more conversations and more public input to make really good informed decisions about what to do with this site. Thank you. Mary Ellis. Um, I guess my response to that is twofold. Um, the first thing is, is that we're not actually approving any specific development. We're, we're approving actually what could potentially be developed on the land. Um, and then the second piece, just for those of you who weren't on city council when this occurred, uh, 200 Vine Street just north of us was a piece of property that the city of Urbana owned. And we actually gave it to a developer for a very small fee of $1. And when we did that whole process, there were several public forum um, in this chamber here before we actually ended up transferring that property to that developer. So there was several times where the public could have input, city council could have input before we actually transfer the property. I kind of see this along the same vein in that just because we're changing the zoning on something, we still own it, right? We don't have to transfer it to any any other entity without conversation or discussion among city council and a final vote. So, so that's for those reasons, I'm gonna vote for this because we're not approving a specific project in this case. James. Yeah, I, I, will, I will vote for this because we are uh, taking a property that has been uh, zoned B3 uh, general business uh, for a long time and is not, um, it is not gotten developed or utilized in that zoning and we're moving it to R5, uh, which would allow for a housing project to go forward should there be one. But also um, when, it, when it's moved to R5, it will not prohibit it being used as it has been for the last 10 years. So it is not creating a barrier. It is um, acknowledging that as a B3 property, it was not gonna be utilized um, going forward. And so I, I'm gonna support this change because I would agree with Mary Alice that the, it does, the zoning does not define a project. It defines how the property could be used in the future. And we know it's not gonna be used in the future as B3. Thanks. Grace. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the, the input and some background on this from fellow council members. Um, I would say what I think is different about this versus um, other instances that may have been in the past um, is that I understand that this is about the zoning of the site. I definitely understand that. My concerns lie in that we already have the IGA with housing authority that says that this will be used for um, housing and that one of the only kind of clauses in there is if um, it doesn't match with city laws, regulations, ordinances, zoning. And so I feel that um, if we change this ordinance, we have the IGA, the developer gets funding. If we even choose to contribute to that funding, then I, I just feel like it's gonna be late in the game and we're gonna be told now we've already done all these steps leading up to it. Now you essentially have to vote yes or terminate the contract. Um, or just put us in an awkward position. And so I have concerns that we're, we're putting ourselves in the position step by step to commit ourselves down the road and it's one piece at a time. Um, with the zoning in particular, I also have concerns that um, I think R5 you know, will be necessary if it becomes housing, but what I've heard from the residents in the limited public input that we've received is request for recreational space at this site or for grocery store or other commerce at this site. Um, and so out of respect for listening to what I've heard from the people of my ward, I don't agree with moving forward on this and have concerns about committing ourselves early on. Mary Alice, would you take the chair, please? Sure, the chair recognizes Diane. Uh, just wanna remind folks that you also have before you several, a proposal for developing a recreation health and wellness center very, very near this site and with also space for other amenities such as a community garden and a playground for the residents. So none of those choices have been the door hasn't been shut on any of those opportunities in this neighborhood and in very close to this site. So those all remain open. 
I'll take the chair back. I'll relinquish the chair back. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Ms. Colasetti? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? No. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. That motion passes. Uh, okay, next next on the um, regular agenda would be resolution number 2022-12-09R, a resolution approving an amended and restated right-of-way license agreement with MCDJ LLC 208 West Griggs Street, which I believe was um, put on the, uh, the recommended for approval. I, I think there were questions, but it was still recommended for approval. Is there a second? Second. Moved by James, seconded by Mary Alice. Any discussion? Grace? Uh, never mind, I guess not discussion. I don't know if we have place for questions. Just I saw the um, thing about an escalator based on the consumer price index. Um, I don't know if we have space for a little more explanation on that or if we're just doing discussion. Sure. Carol? What would you like to know? I, it feels kind of self-explanatory to me, so I'm sorry. Yeah, would that be um, revalue saying each year based on the consumer price index? Right, if the consumer so, price index goes up, the city has the option of increasing the license fee by the percentage um, increase in the CPI, that particular CPI that's cited there. There's multiple versions of CPI. Oh, and each year we have the option to initiate that. It's not automatic. Correct. Right. Okay. And so that would be the proportionate percentage increase. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I will note on the copy, um, the, be, it included in the packet, the corrections were made on um, section numbers the, in the errors that were pointed out. Any other questions, comments? Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Ms. Colasetti? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. That motion passes. Uh, next, the uh, Community of Hull uh, recommends approval of ordinance number 2023-01-001, an ordinance authorizing an office lease, uh, Cohen Building, 136 West Main Street. Is there a second? No second. Chandra? Okay. Moved by James, seconded by Chandra. Any discussion? Chris? Um, I, I don't think the public's heard anything about this. So, Carol, is there any way you could give us a two minute synopsis? I, I believe I gave a two minute or, or so a synopsis at the Committee of the Whole. I, I, can, I can repeat it. No, no, that's okay. okay. Yes. And it was also included in the packet as well. Okay. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Ms. Colasetti? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. That motion passes. Thank you, James. That's all from the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Uh, reports of special committees. There are none. Reports of officers. We had a reminder about the fire station open house. Uh, there is no new business. Last item is discussion on the American Rescue Plan allocations. Will Kolchowski. Thank <laughs> you. 
Go ahead, Will. <clears throat> so today we have another um, kind of open-ended discussion to talk about how we want to proceed for the next step. So um, almost all everybody got their responses or it's back to me with what buckets they saw things in, whether it was yes, partially or fully, um, maybe or no. Um, so kind of the main question tonight is, you know, given some of the responses, where do we want to go forward, um, whether or not we just want Council wants to consider the yeses first, exclude the noes, um, you know, maybe do the yeses first and then take a look at the maybes. Um, so what I handed out was just um, based off of, um, you know, everybody's responses so far, what, you know, for a quote, consensus would be. Um, so if, you know, based off what people did, if, you know, you can see different ways of, you know, seven or so folks had a, the same answer, you know, how many yeses there would be how many maybes or lack of consensus there would be and how, how many there's a consensus for uh, no. So you'll see that for six, seven, uh, sorry, seven, six, five, and four um, for all those. So that kind of gives a different degree of certainty of kind of what everybody was feeling and how to manage the process um, as well as different level of funds to kind of decide what everybody wants to go forward with. So I don't really have too much other than just kind of you know, this is what everybody's responded to date. Um, and then, you know, we can move forward with, um, you know, going with just what the consensus yeses are and then start talking about funding for those. Um, that you kind of see the, seem like the natural next step, but um, it's really up to everybody on what we want to do. Sharice. I know I didn't get my answers to you today, <laughs> but this is my, this was my issue in trying to figure this stuff out because I've got like four different sheets that I'm trying to, you know, find out, uh, like try to put the numbers of requests, the, the money requested with who it is and making my decision or make, doing that that way. My, my biggest problem though has also been, um, there have been a few, I think that are on the list that are not, are no longer on the list. Yeah, there was one applicant who dropped out during the review phase, and then one of the, the city's programs um, also has withdrawn, and that was the one of the housing ones, and that was the presentation we saw with Braden, was they didn't quite allocate all of their funds, um, so they didn't feel like that request was necessary anymore. So that was those are the two that are no longer in there. And then there was two that were de facto ineligible at the very beginning of the process, but um, so those. Yeah. They're still on this list. The ones that are no longer, two of the ones that are dropping out are still on this list. Uh, okay. Are they? Yes. I know one is. I didn't know the other one was. Oh, I see one. I haven't found the other one yet. <laughs> and so, well, and so the other thing is that when, I know we're talking, you know, we have our, our little four columns. So when we're talking about partial, do, do we put in a number where we think it's partial or? Uh, so, to date, that hasn't been the ask is for everybody to assign what that partial percentage was. It was more of yes, totally, yes, mm -hmm. partial, in case there was you know some question or some element um, that somebody didn't want to fund. So a next step could be taking the yes and the yes partials and then start assigning monies to those um, and kind of go from there. Um, that would be something that we could do after this based off of you know determining how many, uh, you know, what consensus looks like. Um, you know, we can take those next steps of figuring out how much money for each one. Okay. Chandra. Um, so uh, looking at the vote count, is it four for, a, uh, for approval or is it like when we do budget and it has to be six? So to do a budget amendment, we would need to do a budget amendment to allocate the funds. So that would be six out of eight if there was eight. Okay, thank you. So that's a natural break, is, um, but it doesn't have to be that one. So I kind of gave everybody the spread there. Grace. Thank you. Um, thanks, Will, for putting this together and for everyone who got their responses. I think it's really helpful to see it like this as a first step. Um, I would hope that um, 
it's not going to be just a, a straight vote. I think it may, but I think for in my mind too, I had envisioned a more collaborative discussion process to kind of fit all these moving pieces instead of just a straight vote. I imagine that there will be some times where that might be relevant, but I was kind of hoping this to be a little more of a collaborative process, like making the goals in a sense, rather than like voting on one item. Um, I think it would make sense to eliminate any of the no's that we can. There's a few that have strong no's. Um, and then, you know, maybe decide on if we can find some agreement on the yes fulls and then start addressing some of the partials and maybes. Um, as far as having our own list on the partials, I think it could go either way. Um, I sent to Will just partial yes or no, but I do have kind of my own list of, you know, hypothetically, if it were just me, what would I have in the full and how much of the partial and trying to trim that down to 10 million, which I haven't gotten there yet, but it's um, getting closer. So it might be a helpful exercise, but I imagine that it'll be a much more collaborative process, I hope. And then I appreciate your thing on the back here, Will, as far as consensus. Um, and I was wondering for consensus, yes, partial or full, how do you come up with that number for partial? So that would just be if everything was at full. So that doesn't take into account some fractional funding for them. So if you funded, so let's just say for the top one, seven plus for consensus, that's, it doesn't take into account whether or not some people said partial funding, that's just the consensus, yes all the funds for that. So um, if there was partial funding, you wouldn't spend all that amount. Thank you. And yeah, so like I said, I'm interested in hearing more. Um, and I think that fellow council members will probably have some other insight and ideas that I hadn't thought of about maybe why we should or shouldn't keep one or fund it more or less than I had envisioned. Um, so I'm definitely interested in having that kind of more collaborative process to hopefully reach some kind of general consensus amongst all of us together. Thank you. John, uh, James. Good, Chandra, I have her hand up first. I'm, I'm about to be. Well, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say I, 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 I'm actually heartened by the fact that the, the five plus consensus seven, eight responding that the, the 19 there is $12.3 million without going through and assessing some partial, one or more partial fundings because you could see that actually getting to a place where it fits in the, the amount that we have. So I, I, this is an exceptional start. I appreciate everybody's work that they've put into it so far. I do feel like, I do feel like um, the no's that have six or seven are pretty clear, have a, have a really long way to go um, come back from that. Um, and so we might be able to move forward in that. I'm, I'm not completely sure about the fives because it depends on where the other, as I scan through this um, for the six and sevens, they didn't, or the, well, the sixes at least, they, there didn't seem to be anybody in the full yes mark, but for the fives there, there may be some people who could lobby for those that could persuade some others but it, it's a great start. I really would like to have Sharice's in here too. I can't wait to see Sharice's in here too. <laughs> Does anyone have a suggestion on defining a no to start eliminating? Well, my, my suggestion was sixes seven. and yeah. sevens okay. could, I, could be removed I, if I everybody agree. With that. Yeah. feels comfortable okay. with that. Just take out six and seven. Okay. Okay, that's a start for eliminating. Chandra, is your hand up? Or yes, yes, okay. yes, it is. <laughs> um, so I was thinking uh, we're, we're dropping um, no's with six or seven people voting no on that. Um, and I, I'd like to start with yeses, like those with four or more yeses, having that conversation um, and then sort of moving into partial. Because um, if, if you're voting for full funding for some of these, like I feel like that starts to dwindle the money very quickly. And so um, to start discussing that, like um, and totaling that those yeses up and then sort of like Grace said, whittle it down um, from there because yeah, I, th I think we can start talking about the high voted yeses first. 
And you're uh, saying four or more? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I like James said, I feel like a four is still like if you if four people voted yes, fully fund, that should be discussed. So oh, four yes, or higher. Fully fund. Yeah. OK. OK. One, two, three, four, four of them with a four, four or more. I see two. You're looking under the yes column. Yes, all, all yes. Um, yeah, fours or five. There, th in gotcha. the first one, okay. three. Or I mean, I can read them out if you'd like, but yes. yeah. Okay, so four or fives. Fully fund. Can I? Yes. Add to that. So I, I think my I think that's a good starting point. My only concern is if we. For the four or fives, are we agreeing for yes, fully funding? I think we need to have a conversation no, about. I'm okay, that's a, conver like that's, this is where that's the a conversation starting. Yeah, so I yeah. think that to provide that clarification of those are the ones we think we should prioritize. Mm -hmm. Saying you know, can we agree that we're going to at least partially fund? Mm -hmm. I think it's difficult to assign a value amount until we have a better sense of how many programs do we think reach that standard. Mm -hmm. um, so, so do we include? five and six yes partials in that initial conversation? I think starting with your your okay. suggestion is a good starting mm -hmm. point. And then um, if we can say these are the programs that we agree we think we should fund, uh, it might be something where we need folks to think about at what levels yes. at that point. Yes. Mary Alice. I'm wondering if we can skin the cat in both directions. Um, I agree with Chandra and what Jay had said in terms of the conversation of the yeses and with the caveat that we're not necessarily committing to full funding for all of those, but I, I do think that that makes a lot of sense. But let's come at it from the other direction, which are all the no's. So in terms of the no's, if we do the six and sevens, we're automatically no's. That leaves us with one, two, three to discuss in terms of whether or not they belong on the no list or not. And we're just kind of whittling it down. Those. So I think if we have a conversation of the, about those three that have five votes for no, and then whether or not everybody's okay with doing the fours, fives, and sixes on the total yes, I think that's, that's a good way for us to look at it. And Will's getting all this down. So. <laughs> I have to watch the notes. Well, and Will, you can, you'll be adding my no's and yeses um, probably I tomorrow. I want to contribute who hasn't spoken yet. Chris, do you have any other thing to add? <clears throat> um, I pretty much agree with whatever, everything that's been said. I think we could, you know, knock out some no's for you. Um, and let's start, you know, congregating our yeses. So. Okay. Grace. Thank you. And then another... Um, hopefully not too big of an ask, but I don't exactly know, that I think would be helpful that I've already mentioned to some staff in other conversations would be to know some potential other sources of funding. Um, you know, what of these could be eligible for CDBG or home ARP things, or as we heard about today, ones that might be in the process of other applications or have plans that if we give X, some other group will give X, so maybe we don't need to fund the full amount, but minus what we know they could already get contributions for. So I think that'll be some other um, more interesting nuances on the partial aspect is what other pots of funding are available so that we can best utilize this ARPA funds and utilize some other available funding as well. Uh, Jaya. So I just want to add one one thought to that because I agree it's you know thinking about best utilization of funds but I think we also have to think about the applicants that we can't assume that they're going to apply for those other pots of funds we don't know what capacity folks have if they played by the rules they applied for this funding and we believe that they deserve to be funded I think that we need to take that into consideration if we're going to encourage them to apply for under other funding there needs to be a clear process for how they are receiving that funding if they don't have the capacity to apply, you know, 
you know, if it's going to be down the road or if it's going to be a whole separate process. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not penalizing folks for applying for something that they had every right to apply for just because they could be eligible for something else as well. Sandra. I, I think along, along those lines, like we heard tonight, that we have people who applied on this application for TBRA, but then we heard from HHI that no one applied for T TBRA there. So I think it's kind of both both ways. I think maybe we let them know that even though you may not have get gotten fully funded here, there's a there's another pot of money you could access to fill that TBRA gap. So I think it, it could be both, but I mean I don't know if it's necessarily our also our responsibility to tell them where other money are is it's also eat or be eaten kind of world. But um, yeah, I kind of see it both ways. And out of fairness to the applicants too, I, I know at the very beginning and throughout the process, we, um, we did um, say that their applications would be reviewed and scored, which they were. So that's what your, the scores you have are the result of the um, review and scoring process. Hey, are we, do we have some clear so direction? is it, for the next discussion, I have two items written down. If it's, there was four or more fully yes, you wanna discuss that to decide kind of what to do with those, but it's just the full amount, not the partial. And then the other second item was if there's five or no more no's discussing whether or not you're ready to just cut them off the list completely or do we need, is, does that need to be a discussion or can that just happen? The no's were the sixes and sevens. Sixes, Both can okay. go. Yeah. The fives were fives discuss. discussion. Okay. Yeah. Discuss fives. Yeah. James. I'm going to add um, a suggestion. If we're if we're putting if we're making new buckets here for discuss and 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 not, I would suggest that. Um, five or more in the yes partial um, definitely should be in the group that we're discussing. That's agreeable. Five or more in the yes partial. In the yes for partial, because next week. Yeah, that, okay. that's a clear consensus amongst this group that it's meriting some funding. And so we have to talk about how much, right? So that's the discussion at that point. I will also add that for any item that I put, you're not seeing my scoring, right, in there, but for anything that I put yes full, I'm totally comfortable talking about uh, a partial funding model. Um, it, I believe in it. I'd like to support it completely, but if we, you know, to, to spread what we have more broadly, I'm I'm willing I'm always willing to talk about I'm not holding to the full component. Yeah. Am I right that we're we're talking about parameters for a future discussion or are we trying to do this now? I, I believe future discussion. Can, so then with the the parameters we've discussed, I think at least for myself, I feel like it would be helpful to do this again with fewer buckets, right? So it's yes, partial or full. At this point, what is a no? And at what at this point, what still a maybe would be my recommendation because I think we're going to get a lot closer um, to to what still is a maybe, which would mean a lot fewer discussions. Um, that that would just be my recommendation because if we're saying there was a big chunk right between the yes or yes partials that we think deserve discussion, um, you know, I think clarifying is is that something right that we feel like is worth funding, and then there there are probably some that might. We don't have Charisse's in here too, right? So it might be that those get bumped to the yeah, no's. Yeah, I was going to say something might switch over to, I mean. Yes just... or no at this point, <laughs> right? So I, I just wonder if we can kind of consolidate down. Because honestly, looking at this again now and seeing, okay, well, there's kind of some consensus around this. And the ones that, that you know, have a high number of one way or another might be ones that council members want to take another look at. So that would be my recommendation is to consolidate down and revote. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, because for me, it was really, 
just going through these projects and then I was like, okay, I need the list that's gotten, you know, how much they're asking and then I had to go find that and then it's like, oh gosh, I want to look at the applications again. The, you know, from the thing that we got. And it's, it's been, I, I, I would try to give a lot of people, but at the same time, I have to think of on in mass the community, what's what what I what I feel would be more um, efficient or effective, and um, this has not been an easy task for me. You know, it just hasn't it hasn't been as as easy as I had hoped it would be. It's not that easy. I think it's safe to say it hasn't been easy for anyone. <laughs> Mary Alice. So, so I, what I'd like to propose, um, because I, I do know, I, I, I've been in the situation where I've been waiting for people to give me information so they can move forward. Um, so that, that takes a lot of time and, and effort from somebody just keeping track of people who have and have not turned things in. So what I'd like to propose is, is that Sharice get her spreadsheet in as soon as possible. <laughs> and um, once she does that, Will can take the list, the existing list, Condense the yes and the yes partial columns. Just add them together, right? Seven is the first one. Six, you know, nine. Add in Sharice's information, and then cut out anybody who has their six or a seven, a six or higher in the nose. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense to you, Will? Since we're asking you to do it, <laughs> since I'm asking. You. So we'll end up with three buckets: yes and yes partial in one bucket, maybe in another. No. And no's still to discuss no, because we still have some no's even after we remove the people who have six or seven votes of no. So the no, the no six or seven bucket. The no that doesn't have six or seven no's already gets taken off the list. No's, no's yeah. of five and the or fewer. The six or seven no's will no longer be considered. Yep. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the bucket that's outside in the okay. So all, on, uh, that is just looking for next time a shorter list, and then just that, um, just consolidating the yeses, and then taking out six nos. Um, so now there'll be a, essentially that's almost the exact same table, the six plus uh, consensus. That'll be what you see then. Except for Sharice. With Sharice's numbers correct, so you know, exact and the, numbers will And there change. are some answers to that second set of questions that we still expect to get of applicants? Yeah, there's, there was a couple follow-up questions. Those are supposed to, people are supposed to respond by Wednesday, I believe, and then okay. I can follow up with so that. But there's not be, too many then. That should be the last bit of um, applicant responses to consider. Sandra. I, d I don't know if I like combining yes and yes partial. Can you walk me through that again? Because if, I don't know, if someone voted yes partial, that doesn't mean yes full. So I don't, I just. Having looked at everybody's responses, I think everybody has a slightly different philosophy of how they viewed it and um, did things. So I think yes, full is a project where uh, somebody liked and was happy to full it. They thought all the costs were justified, all the outcomes were appropriate, you know, complete alignment. A yes partial could, could either signify a slight lower preference, or it could also signify some aspect of that application that somebody didn't like. So 80% um, of it might be great, but 40% they didn't want to particularly fund that one. So it could mean different things to different folks. Um, there's not a clear guideline of what right. somebody I, had to And have. I think that that's, that's the thing. So I guess the question for my fellow council members, is everyone's yes, could that be synonymous with yes partial? Are you willing to say, I'm saying yes, fully funded, but not, I'm also saying it's okay to partially fund it, I think. James. So that, that's kind of where I see this going, is that looking at the yeses, there, there's no like seven yes in here, right? So there's gonna be a discussion about whether the, each of these yeses are full or what partial we're going to agree to. And so I see us distilling this to, I'll call the three buckets Leaning yes, maybe, and leaning no, right? And we're, and we're taking out the absolute no's. The leaning yes or there's a consensus between yes and yes partial that we'd like to fund this. We just have to agree on the degree. 
and then there's some in the middle that we're not sure of because they're, they're mixed. And then there's the ones that have the fives in the nose that looks like they're going to be nose, but we want to talk about it because there were people that were advocates for it before we commit them to being nose. That's why I call it leaning no, mm -hmm. maybe, and leaning yes. Yeah, I like those titles, yeah. The absolute no's are gone. Grace. Thanks. Um, I don't care entirely too much about combining the yeses, yes full, yes partial. I'm, I'll be down for the ride regardless. Um, I don't quite understand. I think there is some value the way I'm seeing it in keeping the yes full and kind of starting with those high amounts. Because if we have general agreement that we want to fund you know, full, and I think I also definitely take Jay's point and feel more comfortable not committing that, you know, we can come through. If our yes partials are more than our amount, then we could, you know, chip away whatever we're comfortable with from the fulls. But I think that it, it would save us some time in conversation if there is a general agreement that, you know, the majority want to fund all or most of this one versus which ones will need to figure out exactly how much to fund partially. So I feel like we just, kind of lose that simplicity when we just combine them all. But as I said, I'm down for the ride. I'll be here either way. <laughs> James. I don't I don't think we want to lose the the detail here to refer to. Um, it's just that it feels like if the if a, uh, a proposal has I'll call it five or more combined and yes the yes partial we're likely going to find a way to fit it in. That's why I'm calling it leaning yes. It's just helping will kind of group things another another layer. But I don't want to. I, I don't want to. We have this right. We can always go back and and look at how how strong it was for full, how strong it was for partial, if we want to refer back to it. And I know I'm not going to forget what I wanted to fully fund and advocate for that. Could I just add sure. something to the, the conversation? As long as it's not, not another bucket. <laughs> it, it, it's not another bucket, but the hard part of this is going to be the partials, right? And so I'm just wondering if you want to spend some time actually submitting what you think partial looks like for any given one. Otherwise, you're starting each conversation is going to be no information is going to be on the table yet. And so you won't have, you won't have any sense of whether people are thinking about 10% or 90%. And so if you wanted to spend some additional time, because that's the hard part of the conversation, you could spend a lot of time on the first one and then realize, oh my gosh, we have to have that kind of conversation on 20 more applications and, you're, and you don't have any sense of proportion relative to other, to other um, projects. So I'm just tossing that out. There's some additional time spent on actually submitting what partial looks like could move the conversation faster when you come back together. Mary Alice. I, um, I, I've been in those conversations where you're trying to figure out exactly how to, how to thread the needle with, you know, X number of dollars. I do think that we need a list of who we're funding before we even start allocating money. So I think I'd like to have consensus among city council going, we agree that we're going to fund these entities. And then once we have that, then we can go after, you know, putting everybody's numbers together and, and so forth. That's just my preference. Would you imagine everybody in that list being funded or that is more or less the first cut? Whereas if, you know, 100%, 100%, you run out of money and not everybody necessarily would get funding from that list. Or is that list, everyone who makes it gets funding in that scenario? That's a good question. Um, I, 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 my philosophy is a little bit different. So my philosophy in all of this really is that there's few programs that I think should get 100% of the allocation. There's a couple of them that it just makes sense, but most of them are partials to me. That's my personal preference. Um, and in that case, then it is playing around with the numbers. And so if we can come up with a list, like these are the projects we want to fund, then we can figure out where those numbers fall in that. But if we start saying, okay, we want to have, this is how much money I want to give to these groups, then we're starting to get 
into the weeds of we don't have consensus around are we even funding this group or not. That's, that's why I want to come to that consensus, if that makes sense. James. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather collect that kind of information from all of us and then see, see where, what it points to, as opposed to me saying, I think Project B needs 90% of the funds they asked for. And then, you know, if we go through a reaction and action process for each of these, it'll take forever. Whereas we can, we can trust ourselves and say, here's this, I'll use the leaning yes group and go through and solicit the ideas where, where people think that funding lies, whether it's full or partial, as a number, and have Will give us that information and say this is, this is what the average was, this is what the standard deviation was, does, you know, if it's, if it's really close, then we, we may have something. If it's a real spectrum, then we, then we might have to spend more time talking on it to, to get to it. But I, I'd rather collect that kind of information to drill to a number, collect, you know, have it sent in from each of us so we have our starting points and then work from where that leaves us. Mary Alice. Chris, Chris, oh, sorry, Chris. Chris. Yeah. Well, as Mary Alice knows, I'm a little more aggressive on the must have full fundings. Um, but like I agree with James, if I want something fully funded, man, I'll take any amount of money, right? A partial's fine too. So I'm willing to, you know, work with you all and collaborate. And I think the idea of somehow communicating to Will what our partial numbers might be would be, would be helpful for him to kind of average them out, but I'll let it, Will decide that. Do you want to do that before you've created these new buckets? Let's do the let's do the original new buckets that we thought of, the three. And once the projects yeah. are identified, then start yeah, yeah. assigning funding. James. So uh, I'll just suggest something. I'm, I won't be disappointed if people say, no, this is a stupid idea. If Will can put these new buckets together for us and share those with us, um, I. This is just one path. I see us focusing funding, looking at those uh, leaning yes groups and going through and doing a funding exercise for it on it. And that means that the maybes and the leaning no's aren't in that pass, but, it, but we can see where that takes us and see if, it's, if, if we find a consensus with that. If it, if it takes us to a point where there's money left over, then we can talk about the maybes and then maybe talk and go eventually to the leaning nose if we have to. But it gives, because I, you know, I see there could be something on there that we're leaning yes on, significant yes, and somebody will say 100%, a couple of people say 100%, and somebody will say 25%. And that'll, that'll, that'll come out, right? Or we might all think this is, this is a 50% thing. And then we've, we've moved that forward because there's not a lot of deviation between what people are such as thing. We might be able to put that aside and then focus our future atten attention on, on what's left. That's just, that's a, I like the idea of trying to take the stuff out like we did with no's, but now with yeses that we find a stronger consensus with. And the only way we're gonna get that is if we put put more data in on each pass from, from this group. I, I also- And you have $10 million. Yeah, right. Um, I just wanna say that we gotta work in Sharice's answers yeah. first and foremost for- and Absolutely. Yeah, 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 okay. No pressure, Sharice. <laughs> none of, well, none of felt. So none. just related to that, you know, each, if each week before each discussion or every other week, you know, we need eight people to revise their lists, partial yes, partial no, how much money, leaning yes, leaning no. Um, you know, if everybody's scrambling Monday afternoon to get it, you know, there's, um, it's gonna make the process more difficult and stretch it out and there's more decisions and harder. So um, there is, 
you know, the more decisions there are to make and the more changes to the list, the longer it's going to take and kind of the more work it is for everybody. So that's just something to keep in mind, not that there's a right or wrong answer, but um, the more revisions, you know, if you only take off six no's this time, then next week we decide to take 10 more no's off. That's an additional week to maybe just, you know, make 10, the list 10 people shorter. So that's not that I have a solution for that one exactly, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, the less you whittle it down each time, the more times it takes. Carol. I also wanted to say one more thing, just looking ahead to when we have to actually um, craft agreements with whoever you decide to fund and hold them accountable for delivering on what you expect. You need to think as you think partial. Like say, I'll just, without thinking about anyone in particular, let's say somebody said, we want to fund two positions for three years and you decide to give them a quarter of the money. They can't do anything with that. They can't deliver on that. So it's either, that either has to be full or half or else you curtail it for some period of time. But you have to think in increments that they can deliver. So, because we actually have to have agreements that will hold them accountable. So um, just don't think in like 10% is gonna do something, you know? So just wanted to add that into the mix. Thank you for that. Grace gotten a little lost here. Um, could we clarify what new buckets are we going through and revising anything? Or are you just combining yes full and yes partial? So I will say I'm a little lost too. So um, there was some discussion about whether doing, having lean yes or leaning no. Um, I don't know if that was prior to the next discussion. Um, I think what I have still do, is- Do you want me to say it again and to take notes this time? Because I can be really clear about what I think that means. Okay, yeah. Because now I feel like we're walking away from something that was defined, which is the from the partial yes and the partial or the full yes, a group that has five or more between those two. That's the lean yes. Including Sharice's numbers. Including Sharice's numbers. <laughs> and then the... Um, the five, we, we're getting rid of any sixes or sevens. They're just right out when Sharice's numbers are in there. The fives that are left after Sharice's numbers in there are going into this lean no group. And everything that's left over is in the maybe. Um, I think it's starting to make a little more sense. I don't know that I agree with that strategy um, and about eliminating I think it does make sense um, but we'll see because some of them are fives that could easily become a six and I don't know that I'm ready to automatically discount those so easily so I guess I have some some reservations I'll so far I think it looks okay no major objections but if some of those fives turn to sixes um, I think I won't be as comfortable eliminating them so um, I would ask that we still have some flexibility there sounds like as far as new buckets I'm not going to make any new buckets personally yet. Um, and then for the maybes, I would really like more discussion. Um, I think as others have said, I would like to hear people's justification because they may have missed something that, you know, is an excellent point on why this is or isn't the best use of funds. So I would really like to hear people's thoughts about um, the maybes before kind of um, including them or throwing them out right away. Andra. So you're saying if a five, if Sharice submits her answers and a five turns to a six, you want to talk about it? Well, just certain ones, those looking at the ones that have five in the no right now, right. I don't feel comfortable just throwing those out right away. But if she had know. submitted hers before and they were, if that five, if it, was a six, we would the then I then tonight I would be saying I don't feel comfortable throwing that one out tonight. So basically, you're saying you don't want to see any sixes thrown out, any additional, any any ones that's not a six right now. She's saying, I'm saying we could see how well, it goes. I don't know what may or may not yeah, change. Yeah, I mean, all I'm saying is that you know, if 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 what I add, I don't see the difference of what I me adding one if there's a five. And it's a six. That means at least one person said something else, or two people might have said something else. 
Is anyone else comfortable with eliminating sixes and sevens? Okay, you're comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable with it because it it feels like um, it's it, it's a it feels majority. like it feels it's like you know twelve angry men. You know the the situation in the courtroom where one person thinks it, we could spend a lot of time, a lot more time doing this if when six of us think that it's not the right place to go, we're going to debate and discuss how to get four or five of those individuals to change their mind. So if a five becomes, just to clarify, if a five turns into a six, then that is out. Okay, consensus, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, just related to that, I think it's important that we're consistent and to be fair for the folks that we've already said their applications aren't moving forward, it shouldn't be any different, you know, whenever Sharice's are counted. And I'm not trying to put you on the, the spot, Therese, but like, you know, if, if something moves from a five to a six, if we've said six is the cutoff, then six needs to be the cutoff. So I, I do think that that's important for that to be consistent. Um, and I think that the general, if it's five or more, putting those aside when they're in the no category for us to maybe come back to if, if that feels feasible down the road. If there are five or more, we still have a good chunk of folks who are, are leaning towards funding it. I, I agree with the buckets. As, as outlined by James. I think that gives us progress at least and, and hopefully isn't too much of a burden. Grace. Well, and, and to that, uh, what I, what I want to say is this, is that if there's under other funding that people may have overlooked or not thought about getting, um, and there's, you know, a consensus of, of six people that said, that think that, well, you know, this isn't, this doesn't fall in the category. Uh, I know, Grace, you asked for a list of, of something like that. I don't know if, if, if uh, you know, we can make recommendations like that, uh, what other funding they could take advantage of in, in something that they might be, um, if, if they're really interested in doing that. And, you know, doing something, then I, I would think that they would be happy to get that information anyway. But as long as our focus remain, this is our job in front of us right now, yeah. is to deal with so, the funding we uh, have to allocate. Right, and there's not that much, you know. That's correct. And $10 I think million dollars we, sure doesn't feel like it, a lot. So yeah, we have, to, we have to right. be con considering that kind of thing. Okay, do we have clarity on the buckets? Okay, so I think I'll run it down. So there's the first item of discussion for the next discussion, presumably next week, is if it received four votes for yes for full and the, or five votes yes for partial to kind of lump them in together as that leaning yes category um, to kind of have that a discussion about what, how we want to fund those. There's this, the maybes, that one's still undefined. If it has a six or seven, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And then if it has five no's, um, that's kind of in a category that we can revisit as needed um, or continue to revisit in the next discussion. So that's what I have as the main takeaways. James. Mary Alice. Uh, so I, I just want to clarify, my understanding of the leaning yeses was the addition of the yes and the yes partials. So it would be a total. So the first one is four plus three. So <coughs> it's seven people say that it should be leaning yes right so if it's five or higher four sorry four or higher then we discuss five five or higher okay. five combined five combined okay five combined thank you so yes and yes partial if it adds up to five or more goes into the yes leaning yes bucket Yeah, because we're talking eight people. So currently there's 19 projects for 12.3 million that have five yes or yes partials, which would 
be the, the first tranche of discussion next week. Perfect. So I guess it was discussed and maybe it's resolved. Um, further thoughts on partial, whether it's a percentage basis that's somewhat arbitrary, Let's leave that off for next week. I think it would be good to do this first step and then do that next. So then the only question I have then is, is there any other format requests or styles, that, you know, to, just open with that short list um, that I can, you know, after Sharice says, get to everybody uh, a little bit quicker. Is it just an open discussion again to talk about the next steps, what we want to do with those folks? Is there um, any analysis or um, ways of thinking about it that you want to see prepared? Thanks. Um, I think that the plan so far sounds good to me. I would be curious in just an updated um, one of these sheets with our original buckets with all eight responses on them for reference. Or Chandra. Does it, does it help if you give us the leaning yes, maybe, and leaning no's, and then we make our own percentages so that like, that we bring with us, I guess, I, I don't know. Like if we, should we start looking at the individually and start like saying like, oh, this person asked for X amount of dollars, but I think that they should get 40%. So like we come in with an idea, is that a good place to at least, so we have something, like Carol said, like we are bringing something at least, so we're not starting with just our buckets next time. Yeah, I think the more ideas or advancing it, the more information is better as far as advancing it goes. So if everybody's ready to give a conceptual amount, whether it's just in your head and then that's the discussion yeah. next week is the rough you know, percentages of you know, roughly 100 or 75 or 50 or whatever it may be. And then from there, you know, we can figure out, you know, whether or not that would be applicable to a particular project, like kind of the examples Carol was giving, but um, if having ideas of the general scope of how much funding, particular one, that having that in mind would be good. Okay. James. Yeah, I, I would like to see this list again with the six, seven, and eights removed, right? They're gone, they're not on the list. And then I would like to see them grouped in the three buckets. So the top being the leaning yes, the middle being the maybe, and the bottom being the leaning no. So they're, they're grouped together. So that visually, it's kind of reinforcing where we're going to, just to help, help us see that. That's what I would like to see. Alice. All right, last last piece, which is um, just based on Braden's presentation was today. Is it possible to check with Sheila, who's behind you, uh, to see if any things that are getting approved are the same that applied here? Because it sounds like some of them might be the same things. So it would be good to know if they are no longer on this list anymore. Go ahead. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that we should preclude them from getting ARPA funds if they get HHI funds. Because are, Sheila, are those being fully funded? Like all of them are being fully funded. Okay, so we know. Bridge to home. Yes, um, where is that one? So, uh, so the funds they asked for for ARPA, are, is it the same? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, is it for the same thing? Program. Yeah. Yep. Healthcare consumers yeah. and bridge to home. Right. Your amounts were much lower 
than what they asked for from right. ARPA. So, so I, I think it might be different. I don't, yeah, I mean, I'd like to. Outcomes for yeah. the two. I mean, it would be good to know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because Champaign Healthcare consumers had three positions for ARPA, mm -hmm. right? And then the bridge to home stuff was a conglomeration of staffing and rental assistance mm -hmm. and so forth. So I don't know if any of those pieces are gonna be funded by the other pot of money. And if so, if these numbers change for those ones that are getting funded by HMO. That's my question. Jay. So related to that, I actually think that there's a, a technical reason for asking that question because I'm assuming ARPA has a restriction on supplanting funds. Is that correct? Does anybody know? I do not know off the top of my head. If that's the case, then that becomes more relevant, right? Because if we're funding a program for, for HHI, then they cannot use ARPA funds to fund the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I do think that if, if there is that caveat in ARPA funding requirements, which is pretty standard for most grants, I'm looking at Sheila, sorry, not trying to put you on this. So yeah, Sheila's saying it's definitely the case, case for HHI. So if we're not looking at it for ARPA, then that would apply for HHI. So not to, to ask folks to do unnecessary work really quickly, but I think if we can find out, are these the same pieces that are being requested to be fund, funded because it will become an issue with supplanting on one side or the other. Um, and so just clarifying are these different needs for the same program or are they the same needs if they are staying on our list of leaning yeses? And I'm, I can provide that to Will to share with you. I haven't seen the ARPA list. I've intentionally separated myself from it, but I think now that we're at this stage and we've made the HHI decisions, I'm fine with stepping in and giving you more information. Okay. We have our marching orders. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, Jay. All right, one thing. So just to clarify, because so for preparation for council members coming to next week, we should be thinking about at what amounts or percentages do we think these different programs should be funded. Um, and I'm saying that partially for myself to make sure I don't feel like I get a, a week off because Will is doing the <laughs> consolidation for us, right? But just so that we can actually have a productive conversation next week and be moving things forward. Um, so we kind of have a sense of like, you know, if it is a specific position we think should be funded or a specific piece of property or equipment, being prepared to, to make that case as we're having that discussion next week. The only problem, sorry, Sharice, is that we don't have Sharice's <laughs> numbers, so we don't know which ones are in the five leaning. Oh, she's, she's like, okay. right I think we'll have her numbers by the end of this meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, As, so and you'll next have... week is Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Yes, the meeting is Tuesday next week. It's Martin, uh, Martin Luther King Day on Monday. All right, yes. so I guess what I'm hearing you say is if, if Will provides us with an updated spreadsheet, given these new naming conventions and number conventions, then we can think about what we want to fund. And then next Tuesday, we'll be able to talk a little bit more in depth. Is that right? Under. What, what I did, even through my first pass through, if I said partial, then I wrote down like, this is the partial that I want to fund, like mm -hmm. asbestos clearing. I want to fund that. So I think also like maybe not a percentage, but like an item or a thing. Right. Right. A couple of things, whatever. As, as much condition as whatever conditions or pieces that you can get specific about, the more helpful it is. Okay. Grace? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I agree with that. I think doing our own amounts for partial is a great idea, and then especially if there's a certain aspect of it outside the dollar percent amount. Um, I was under the understanding that our first next, our next discussion would be kind of the yes, no, maybe ones, and then next step getting through the partial amount. So I think it's a good exercise for us. And if everyone has it next week, we could start diving into it. But I, in my mind, I think we need to figure out the cut first and then dive into all the details of the partial amounts. Any other comments? Yeah. I just want to say thank you, Will. I know this is a lot to coordinate. <laughs> so um, thank you and 
appreciate your, your patience. And Sheila, thank you for being willing to help just everyone who's been a part of this process. I think it's a, it's a quite a process, but I, I hope for our residents, they see that this is something that has intentionally been very collaborative, has intentionally um, been a conversation, um, but that does take more time when we're, we're more participatory like this and it does cause more work for the staff. So just thank you. And once the decisions are made, then all the agreements have to be crafted, which will take some time. So there is, there is some time sensitivity here. So, okay. Um, check with no further items on this agenda. This meeting is adjourned.